First of all, thank you all for uh, allowing me to come and, and uh, share. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, I get the pleasure of sharing the, the peak of this mini series. Um, unfortunately, I was supposed to speak a few weeks ago, um, but like many of us, I uh, ended up quarantined and isolated with the family due to COVID. So I'm happy to be free and here with you all. So this topic is just awesome. Okay, so uh, get ready because I think you're really going to enjoy this. At least I hope I can do it justice, what the Bible reveals um, about man. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So just to kind of bring you up to speed for those that maybe uh, you've probably been here, but if you haven't been here, we've been covering the, the Genesis chapter one and really focusing on the progression that God takes us in on in his creation. And particularly what's uh, relevant tonight is the life that God creates. Yeah. He starts with the plants and the herbs. Mm -hmm. And then he goes a little further and he creates the fish, then the birds, and then the animals of the land and the cattle. But then the end of Genesis chapter one, it ends with God's creation of man. And I want to read these two verses, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. These are verses that I would say, I, I'm not, I don't like to tell people what to do, but you should memorize these verses. <laughs> these are perhaps the, some of the most crucial verses that you will ever come across in the entire Bible, as far as understanding man's purpose. So Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of heaven and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So, What's really incredible here is <clears throat> uh, each time God did something in his first six, in the first five days, when he did something, he said, it says, and God saw that it was good. All right. So uh, I'll just read one. I don't know if I put it on here, but uh, let me see. I have one here. Um, Right? And the earth brought forth grass. This is Genesis 1.12. Brought forth grass, earth, yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with their seed in them according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. It was good. But at the end of Genesis chapter 1, after, man cre after God creates man, mm -hmm. unity says in verse 31, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Amen. Mm -hmm. It was very good. There was something about him creating man that he was very happy. In fact, he was so pleased that in Genesis chapter 2, all right, sixth day he creates man. And it says in Genesis 2.2, 2, which is the third verse here, and on the seventh day, God finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. So God spent all this energy for these six days, preparing the earth, separating the waters, creating the plant life, the fish, the birds, the cattle. Mm -hmm. Then he creates man and he said, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> Finally, I have achieved what I set out to do. I have created man. What is so special about man that God made it to be the peak, the center of his creation? Yeah. 
Well, one thing, when we look at something special about man, all the other life forms that God created, it says he created them according to their kind. Yeah. So Genesis 1.21 says God created the sea creatures and every little living animal that moves with which the waters swarmed according to their kind. Mm -hmm. And every winged bird according to its kind. But when God created man, it doesn't say God created man according to their kind. They were made in God's image. We were made in God's kind. <laughs> so in Acts, it even goes so far as to say that we are the race of God. We're the race of God. Isn't that something? This is how special man is. God even made man, not according to their own kind, but according to God's kind. Mm -hmm. But still, what, what is it about man that God cares so much for? <clears throat> that he was so happy after creating? Well, tonight, the two words I want you to take away from this is image mm -hmm. and dominion. Now, for the sake of time, I'm mainly going to spend most of this time speaking about image. Not to say dominion is not an important word. Um, really, we could probably use a whole other Bible study just to talk about that. Um, we won't because we have much more. There's so much to share in the Bible that we just we have to be selective, right? But this matter of image. Okay, what does this mean? What does it mean that God made man in his own? image well <clears throat> i want to look at the new testament and the person who really fulfilled this matter of being the image of god and that is christ mm -hmm. so <clears throat> if you want to follow along with me here colossians so i'm on the on the second point here colossians 1 15 says that christ is the image of of God, the firstborn, the image, sorry, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. God is invisible, right? He's mysterious. Yet Christ was the image of God. Amen. Now, what, is this, what does this mean? Well, John 1.18 helps us understand it a little more. It says, no one has ever seen God, right? No one has ever seen God. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him, right? No one has seen God, but Christ, as his image, as the image of God, declared him. You could also say, explained him right god is mysterious he is invisible yet christ declared him Amen. you know what we are referring to here is really the attributes the divine attributes of god god is love god is light He's righteousness. He's holiness. He's glory. Yet what does that look like? How can you explain love? How do you explain light? Look at Christ. Right? How do you explain love? When you see the Lord, when the leprous man approaches him and he touches him, you see God's love. It's explained. It's expressed. The divine attributes of God are expressed in the human virtues of Jesus. Right? Light. Why, how do you describe light? Well, when he sat next to a Samaritan woman, she was convicted of her sin. That is light being expressed through the Lord Jesus. 
So to be in the image of God has to do with expressing God. The divine attributes can be expressed through our human virtues. But now I want to pause here very carefully because we don't want to misunderstand what we're saying. Um, we may think, or we hear this, I'm made to show God's love to people. I need to love on people like God loves people. Yes, but we don't want to have the impression that we are merely an instrument yeah. used by God to do something. That's right. right? That's that thought. All right, God created me as an instrument. And now I got to go do things. I got to show God's love. I got to show God's holiness. The Bible doesn't show merely that we are an instrument. Actually, in, in Romans 9, I'll read this here. For does not the potter have authority over the clay to make out the same lump one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? In order that he might make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, which he had prepared before unto glory. This doesn't say instruments. Yeah. It says vessels. It means a container. Yeah. We're not near an instrument, but a container. So this image, we are in the image of God. We are also a container. So I have up here this glove. And I, I love this because this glove is made in the image of a hand, right? But it's also made to contain the hand, right? This hand wants to be expressed. And the glove is the image through which this hand can be expressed. But it but simply the hand by itself. Right? This is is somewhat empty. Right? If you if you look at this, yes, it looks like a hand, but without being filled with the hand, it does not express right the hand. In the same way, God wants to be expressed. Man is in the image of God. Yeah. Yet without being filled with God, how can we express Him? So the most important thing is, as a container, we need to be filled with God yeah. so that we can express Him. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I was, uh, recently there was, you know, a lot of snow came through. And uh, my three-year-old son wanted to go play in the snow, so I, I, I put some gloves on him. And it's kind of funny because his hands are very small. And so his hand didn't fully fit into the glove. All right, so there was some container, but there was not the, the full realization. So this glove he tried to use to grab, you know, form snowballs. All right, it's... Although it looks like the hand, it's not very useful like this, right? But, right, in the same way, right, we want to express God's love, his righteousness, his holiness, light, glory. Yet, if we're not filled with God, yeah. what are we really expressing? Right? So, so in our... Um, when we try out of ourselves to express God, right, there is, right, we may see, oh, there's love there, but that love is empty. It doesn't have the reality in it. Right, we may show, we try to 
you know, some people may try to be holy. And their attempt to be holy is they try to not do certain things. All right, all right, I'm going to, you know, I remember one time I was like, all right, I'm not going to listen to certain music anymore. And maybe that'll help me be holy. But eventually that's not real, right? The real holiness is when you are filled with God, yeah. actually all those other things will fall away, right? So we don't, we don't simply express God's love by trying, but by being filled. When we are filled with him, the expression will come out. And the divine attributes of God will be fully expressed in our human virtues. And so, right, uh, 2 Corinthians says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This treasure refers to this, this divine life that is in us. But it needs to be expressed out of us. The more we're filled in our earthen vessel, right, this would be expressed. So I want to close with, with this matter also of dominion to kind of make sure I, I touch both matters. So <clears throat> the, the second point is that I said that let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of heaven, over, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the surf, upon the earth. Man was made in God's image to express him, mm -hmm. but is also <clears throat> given his the dominion that we would represent God, that we would carry out his authority on the earth, that we would bring in the kingdom of God to the earth. You know, God created the earth. He doesn't simply want us to try to be good here and then one day go back to see him. He wants, he created the earth, that it would be subdued by man. Mm -hmm. So while we're here, we are here to represent God in his authority so that eventually his kingdom will come to the earth. Mm -hmm. So I just want to close by reading this focus because um, you know, just it captures kind of everything that, that we talked about. First point is man is the center of God's creation, right? We see that in Genesis 1. That, that's why it's the peak. That's why it's at the end. That's why God saw it was very good. Right? Man is the center of God's creation and the human life is the highest created life. That's what we're given dominion over all other things. Right? Human life is the highest. And then man was made in God's image that all the divine attributes of God, right, that we talked about, love, light, holiness, righteousness, these things might be expressed in our human virtues. And how is this accomplished? This is the key. To understanding how can we express God as God's image? It's accomplished not by being an instrument. You know, I was thinking, sometimes this is how we are, right? We, we spend time with the Lord, we get filled, and then we take off, all right? All right and then we go and try to do something for God, right? The glove and the hand need, need to stay attached to one another, right? The more we're joined to the Lord, then we can express it. So it's accomplished not by being an instrument used by God, but instead as a vessel to contain God. As we're filled with God, this excellent treasure is revealed in our earthen vessel. And then the last thing, man was also made to exercise God's dominion that the kingdom of God may come to the earth. 